If a book doesn't have a diagram of the Krebs cycle, then I don't trust it. Not really. Hi there, Sage Candidate VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about 800 meter to mile race training. And uh, thanks again for all the comments and uh, feedback. Uh, I got this vote from Jacob T360, and I realized that, you know, short distance events are really cool. I grew up running track throughout middle school, high school, and college. And granted, I was not the best 800 meter to mile runner, but I did run a lot of them. And I also uh, read a lot of books uh, covering. Uh, that kind of training from Better Training and Distance Runners by Co, uh, you know, Sebastian Coe's dad, as well as uh, some other um, David Martin, physio exercise physiologist guy. Uh, you know, run with the best, running tough. Daniel's running formula, of course, was always a big influence growing up, as well as a lot of lay study in college of exercise physiology and uh, doing a lot of painful workouts, basically speed workouts for me on the track. And I will say, you know, for my credibility, maybe losing some credibility here to you young speedsters, but I never cracked two minutes for an 800. I ran an open to 800 meter uh, my senior year of college at, at UC Irvine just as an open meet and I ran two flat point four. Actually my junior year and my senior year, I ran two flat point four. And it was very embarrassing because my the head track coach at Cornell put me in like an actual fast heat of an 800 with guys, I think he seated me at 153 and I was running two flat. I was dead last by like 50 meters. It was really embarrassing. But I was a 10K guy. I ran my 10K PR a week later. Um, and I did run a, a 355, 1500 meters uh, a week before that, which was a lot more respectable. It's about a 415 mile. Uh, but again, not my events. My, I was a 10K guy in college. That was the only event I could score at in, in conference, 10K and cross country. But to get into the nitty gritty of training, because I know a lot of you are interested in uh, improving your speed. And this is real, really what we consider mid-distance events. Uh, 800 meters to 1500 meters or mile is a very good mix of speed and strength. And it's a very high dose of lactic acid, which is of course your limiting factor in these events. Having a high VO2 max, but also high lactic acid tolerance as well as high basic speed uh, is really important. Uh, 800, you develop the highest uh, acidity in the blood with your blood pH or the lactic acid spike. And it's extremely painful. It's extremely intense. It's basically a long sprint. Uh, mile's kind of the same deal. A uh, little more aerobic influence in the mile, but still a very speed oriented event. And this happens especially as you get older, as you get faster, whether you're running, you know, five minutes for the mile or you're a, a sub four minute miler. Um, especially, you know, as you go pro in the mile, uh, I had college teammates that ran 342 for 1500 and they were running four flat mile splits basically. Uh, my, one of my teammates, Jimmy Weiner actually at Cornell, he ran 148 in the 800 as a true freshman. So I was used to training with some real speedy guys like that and I wasn't even close to them in the mid distance events. But uh, all else aside, let's get into the training talk. So first off, I'm going to find some limiting factors in the 800, uh, and it's going to be limited a bit by your basic speed. Uh, if you're not fast enough, you're probably going to have to move up in distance, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I moved up from running the sprints in middle school, 200 meters, to the mile real quick, and then marathon in college real quick, and now ultras. So you move up as you get older, that's a general trend. Uh, but if you look at your open 400 meter time, open 400 meter sprint, whether you do a relay or you run an open 400 or you kind of know what your 200 meter sprint time is, uh, that's got to be pretty fast. And let's say you're trying to run a two flat 800. Well, to crack two minutes in the 800, something I never did, of course, you're going to have to be able to run at least 55, maybe 56 open. Most guys who crack uh, two minutes in the 800, are at least 53. Uh, but if you have 55 second 400 speed, you double that, you say, okay, I could come through in 59 and come back in 61 and run a two flat. Uh, so that's the bare minimum requirement is that kind of basic speed. And if your 400 time's not down to 55 yet and you wanna crack two, you're gonna have to really work on some raw speed by doing some really fast sprinting work, doing some work in the gym maybe, uh, getting that speed up. And hopefully, you know, if you're still in high school and you're, you're growing, uh, as you get older and, and you grow, you, you'll develop more speed. But then on the flip side of things, 
strength brings out your speed. And so you have this basic sprinting speed, you have this basic ability, and this goes for the mile as well. If you wanna crack, uh, let's say you wanna crack five minutes in the mile, then you better be able to run at least under uh, 220, probably 218, 215 for a, for a half mile. Uh, Cause you gotta be able to come through in, in 230 and, and bring it back home in 230. So there are minimum speed requirements to doing these things and you wanna work on both. But that's showing that, you know, hey, if you run a 52 second 400, you've got a lot of potential to run way under two minutes in the 800 if you build your strength. And so that's kind of the second part of this training talk is to really focus on building your aerobic strength and, and your physical uh, structural strength uh, through high mileage and more aerobic base building types of training. And that is really the key to long-term success in all distance events, whether you're a mid-distance runner or you're a marathoner or ultra marathoner, uh, is building that aerobic base. And so a lot of training cycles a lot of successful training cycles, and this started mainly with Arthur Lydiard back in the day. Uh, he's training his 800 meter runner, uh, Peter Snell, for the 800 meter final in the Olympics. And he was training him like a marathon runner. He was doing 22 mile long runs out in these, this hilly course around New Zealand. He was doing 100 miles a week, and he was training like a marathoner for months and months and months, doing hill sprints, uh, hill phase, hill bounding, uh, all this strength work steady state types of tempo run work and then he'd do his anaerobic stuff he'd get that sharpness back and he was able to kick really well in the final 200 to 100 meters of an 800 meter final and he might not have had the fastest flat out 400 meter sprint speed but he was the strongest and so he because he had that strength he could bring out the most of his speed and that the same thing goes with a mile or 5k or 10k as well so you, you build your aerobic base you build your your um and aerobic metabolism uh, to buffer lactic acid better with lactate threshold training, but also to have more capillary beds, better running economy. And you also have structural strength from doing all that high mileage and long runs and tempo runs. And then when you add the speed component to it, you could really capitalize on all your speed. And that's really the key to uh, success. And even in college, I look at uh, Robert Rojo Johnson of Let's Run.com was my college coach at Cornell and he coached the mid-distance guys as well and our big season was always indoor track and uh, we had a lot of guys running close to four flat in the mile we had a lot of 152 to 150 800 meter runners we had guys running the thousand meters uh, indoors great four by eight uh, relay team and it probably our most successful guys scoring points at least indoors was our mid-distance team and uh, the kinds of workouts that I saw them doing is they do a lot of base building with us. They, you know, do the tempo runs, the high mileage. And generally as a mid-distance runner, you're more likely to get injured if you jump straight into high mileage training. You're not as efficient with your running economy to just go out and pound out 20 mile long runs. You have to build into it slowly. So build your mileage up with slow, easy pitch runs first. Don't get injured and then add in the tempo runs and, and do this, you know, months and months before your season even starts. So you're building the space. Cross country running is always a great activity for 800 meter specialists because they do that all fall. And then by the time they roll into indoor track or outdoor track in the spring, uh, they've got this huge aerobic base and it kind of goes along uh, the yearly cycle of training. So you're building your aerobic base and Arthur Linyard basically pioneered this. Uh, you see other programs that emulate this and my college program definitely did. We had milers training like marathoners in the first couple phases as well as the distance runners. So we're doing the same training now as the season progresses, as things get more specific, then specificity of training really starts kicking in. And they're doing basic speed, they've got a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers probably if, you're, if the 800's your main event, uh, but you start actually doing some 200's maybe, you're doing some 400's. You're doing some work that's not quite really anaerobic in nature, but it's getting down to race pace. You're getting uh, what Daniels would call economy workouts in. Uh, stimulating those fast twitch muscle fibers and getting efficient to running mile race pace or 800 meter race pace for short distances with plenty of a recovery. Now the plenty of recovery part is key because you're not inducing too much lactic acid. It's not barf killer workouts. Um, you want to save that for later in the season. And you really have to be careful when you induce a lot of speed and intensity into your program. And you do have to do that to be well groomed for an 800 or 1500. Uh, but you have to do it strategically at the right time. And usually with, with kids racing in school, this happens throughout the course of the season. You have to race quite a bit. I remember running the mile 800, four by four, all in one meet in high school. And I do that every week. Then maybe you do another race on the weekend, do an invitational track meet. So you're racing a lot. And they usually say a general rule of thumb is you have to race about five 
800s before you even get up to your peak fitness by the end of the season. But the other workouts you do on the side are going to be really key as well. And later in the season when you actually really want to peak and you want to capitalize on all the aerobic fitness that you've built up, that's when you hit it, you empty the anaerobic credit card and you fill yourself with lactic acid so you could induce some natural buffering capacity in the body. And you think of lactic acid it floods the system, well your body has natural buffering capacity. It's much like uh, baking soda. I used to ingest a lot of baking soda in high school as an experiment. I was like, oh, this will help me buffer lactic acid. It's great, it's really basic, you got lactic acid. And you know, it would work if the, <laughs> the side effect of taking a lot of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, wasn't uh, causing a bunch of nausea and uh, stomach distress and I basically was going to throw up before I could even start running hard. So, you know, that goes hand in hand. But your body has natural buffering systems and so to capitalize on that, you're really playing with fire and it's really going to be a short term thing. Uh, when you want to peak, you're hitting VO2 max workouts hard, you're hitting these lactate, uh, lactic acid tolerance workouts basically. Um, really hard and you're doing that in races as well so you're starting to do that maybe for the last four weeks four to six weeks of your season that's when you're gonna peak uh, you can't burn out until you catch fire and when you induce a lot of lactic acid in the system you catch fire and so hopefully you'll see an increase in fitness uh, with your VO2 max and your lactic acid buffering as the season progresses now what kind of workouts do you want to do to really peak for that 800 well besides the races themselves which are the most specific workouts uh, you do things like 4x400 four with a 4 minute rest. 4x400, four fastest possible average. Killer workout. Um, a lot of guys will run it way faster than their mile race pace. Uh, it's a pretty long recovery so you could almost sprint each 400 and you are just really dying <laughs> at the end of it. But you want to run with good form, you don't want to get your form sloppy. But you will be burning with lactic acid, I guarantee it. Other workouts, uh, you know, 12 to 20 by 200 in and out, real quick. Uh, we used to run them in like 30, I was, that was like a sprint for me, but guys will do them faster than that. Uh, with a minute rest, real short recovery, 200s, on and off. Um, other workouts you could do, the traditional VO2 max workouts, you're doing a lot of 800s, 800 meter repeats at 3k pace to still build that VO2 max and that strength, uh, but then you're also doing those 200s and 400s, as well as a lot of basic speed. Uh, I think for an 800 meter runner to miler that being in the weight room is actually more beneficial. Uh, extending that stride length, being able to have a powerful push off, being able to have good mechanics with your upper body as well, uh, good sprinting form is really key for these events. So uh, definitely could touch on the weight room, a lot of core strength, but also some upper body and you know some lower leg strength as well. And I won't even go into that because that's a whole separate talk. But uh, that's kind of really my rant on 800 meter to 15 or mile training or 1500 meters if you run that. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and subscribing and sharing this video if you like it. And uh, feel free to comment below with any questions you have for a future training talk topic. Uh, I'm obviously not uploading this on Thursday right now, but I just felt like doing it. And uh, again, the key takeaway is really train like a marathon or train like a 5K, 10K runner first. Periodize your season, build up that base, build up your mileage with easy paced runs and some long runs. Add in intensity gradually and be careful with it while keeping basic speed and then do the race specific workouts. And if you're in school, you're probably gonna have to listen to your coach anyway, so uh, there might not be a whole lot you could do there. But that's really the key to, to long-term performance. Uh, stay healthy, stay hydrated, eat healthy, get plenty of sleep, and uh, yeah, that's my rant. It's probably pretty long-winded, but thanks again for watching, thanks for all the support, and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.